Inlinks is a technology for search engine optimizers and for content writers that is built from the ground up around topics and entities rather than around keywords. It allows you to do three things very, very well. The first is to create content schema that will allow you to say what topics or entities are the most important on this particular web page. Secondly, as soon as you've done that, it will allow the system to build and automate internal links to those target pages and those target concepts. That are all, so all of a sudden you've scaled your internal linking, not based around keywords, but around helping users and search engines understand where the authority is on your website for any particular idea. And the third thing that you can do is you can optimize that content on any page on your website by analyzing the most important topics and ideas in the pages that are already seen by the search engines as the most important pages for any particular phrase, concept, or idea. So let's jump in and let's set up a website using InLinks. The site that I'm going to set up is called datacolada.org. Datacolada.org is a site which analyzes the underlying data that people were using and the underlying methodologies that people were using when they were doing research projects of their own. So it seems like an appropriate one to look at for our, for our business, for endings. And we have to set at this, when we set up a project, we have to set up a country because we use Google Search API quite a lot of times, as well as our own APIs. We use Google Search API to have a look at um, search, engines, uh, search engine results or SERPs. You can set up any English-speaking country, Spanish-speaking country, or French-speaking country. And as more languages become appropriate and get launched in the in links technology, they'll start to appear in the drop downs as well. So the first thing that InLinks tries to do when you set up a new project is to analyze and find out approximately how many pages are already indexed in the search engines. And in this particular site, we found around about 222 pages in the SERPs. Um, and so we've made a suggestion as to how much you should bring in. You don't have to always bring in all of the web pages on your site. However, a level one account on InLinks costs allows you to bring in up to twenty, up to up to hundred pages. So I don't have to proceed as recommended. I can bring in smaller numbers of pages, and in this case, I'm going to bring in fifty pages so that I've got enough capacity to also do some auditing and analyzing on top. So we're going to uh, override the suggestion of 111 pages. I'm going to start by analyzing 50 pages, and then will proceed like that. So now InLinks needs to start building up your project. So whilst, what, what, what is happening here? What we're doing now is we're starting to read the first 50 pages on datacolada.org. And these 50 pages are going to be based around the, um, the most prominent pages in search rather than crawling page by page. So we're going to be choosing the pages that are already doing best in search. And what we're doing is reading the information and breaking it down into its underlying entities or topics. So we're running what's called a named entity extraction algorithm. Some people call it um, a natural language AI, uh, natural language pro program. Essentially though, it's reading the top 50 pages of content in uh, datacolada.org and it's seeing that we're talking about concepts like adverse effects and false positives and baselines and uh, test panels. So you can get the idea that this website is talking about ideas that are semantically quite close to each other oftentimes. So it's building out a knowledge graph based on our own knowledge graph and our own understanding. And for us, any entity is something that usually has a direct match with a Wikipedia page. And that Wikipedia page may be in English, maybe in French, maybe in another language. 
But usually, if we set things up in English, then we'll be looking at Wikipedia pages in English. So once we've built up a number of pages here, then the system is going to carry on working in the background. We've still got another 30 pages under analysis. But we've brought in the top 15, 16 so we can get started and start to analyze what's happening. So before I dive into this, uh, we have some help buttons on most of these screens, and you can always get a quick reminder of what's happening on any one of the pages that you see just by clicking on the help buttons. And these will change from time to time as the product improves and upgrades and develops. So keep an eye on the help page, and if you ever get stuck, try that in your first instance. You can also see a chat screen on all of the pages and you can ask a question. We'll ask that, answer that um, in real time if we, uh, if we can. Um, we work usually on European time, time scales. So if you're in the States, then you may have to wait until the next morning to get a response. So the first thing that we want to know is uh, what is the knowledge graph that has been built up for datacolada.org? So I'm going to click on topics here. So topics or entities are similar sorts of concepts. And this is actually a knowledge graph of the topics that are being discussed on datacolada.org. And we're talking about things like data and research and results and newspapers and publishing. And we can flip that around to get a visualized version, a, gra a, a graphical version if you want to. So we can see that datacolada.org is talking about things like, um, is talking about things like uh, musical instruments here or, or, or um, adverse effects or patents or differential diagnoses. And these are now um, categorized because we've categorized all of the uh, pages, uh, all of the entities in our in our knowledge graph. So within the concept of health, uh, datacolada.org is talking about adverse effects, patients, differential diagnosis. To a lesser extent, a secondary level, it's talking about watchful waiting, psychiatry, uh, visual perception, etc. And if you want, you can click on this and find out which pages we've seen that are talking about adverse effects. So these are the two pages that have been talking about uh, adverse effects um, that we've analyzed so far. Um, these may change um, in future as well as we add more pages and they may have some more, more um, connections. Also, notice that some of these are in green. So the concept of American is something that 75% uh, of the time that it's been mentioned on the website, Google has also returned it because when we, uh, as, as an entity. So when we ran our own natural language um, AI, we also ran Google's natural language AI as well. And so you can see the overlaps here and see where Google is picking up um, entities uh, and where they're not picking up entities. And this is a very useful um, ability for Inlinks because we have our own natural language um, AI. We can show you that gap analysis. And if you think that it's very, very important for uh, your website to, for example, um, have a uh, have uh, the concept of job hunting and it's not being picked up by Google as a concept, then that's something to work on because, you know, Google, um, if Google understands those main concepts, that's a, that's a good thing for you. Bear in mind, though, that Google's NL AI is not trying to do what we're trying to do. We're trying to give you all of the entities on the page and allow you as the SEO to um, influence that and to try and say which are the main entities for a search engine to take into account, whereas uh, Google is reporting what it sees are the main entities on a page. Google tends to be good at analyzing and spotting brands, places, people, things that start with a capital letter. It's not so good at seeing concepts like labor in the context of economics. So this is a way of looking at your knowledge graph for your website, and we've built it for you, and it's very easy to see. Now let's try and do the, uh, to, to have a look at what we can do with this uh, information. The first two things I'm going to show you are how to uh, set a target for a page or for pages on your website, and then how that then creates schema for your website and creates in the internal linking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is associate the home page, the main page of many websites uh, with a specific target that underlines and underpins the, um, at the, 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 the um, overall uh, content for, for the business, for the website. So when I click on target, it will list all of the entities that it's seen on the page. So it's seen that this page is about cognition and data and evidence and anonymity and research. And so you can see all of these and they should more or less be in the priority order. So hopefully you will see the important topics at the top and the other ones at the bottom. Uh, if you don't see that in that kind of order, 
that may suggest that some of the content on your page is is not as um, as appropriately laid out as you might think, uh, and you may want to reconsider um, why the page is coming out with uh, with a system that's 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 seeing entities um, at the top that are unexpected. This seems okay though, and I think that this website is about data and research. So I'm going to make those two topics as the target topics for this page. Data and research. So now we've set that um, those target topics um, in the background, our system will start to do some other uh, some other um, internal linking analysis uh, and also create some schema for us. Let's also do another one while we're here. Let's have a look at this page, which is saying uh, it's about seminars, past seminars. So if I click on target here, it'll pick up a completely different set of underlying entities because these are the entities for the past seminars page. This is clearly about seminars, so we will select seminars. We can't select data again because data has already been selected. And the whole idea here is that we are trying to build an internal link optimization uh, system. Uh, and so you can't have two pages that are just about the same concept, uh, because if you were to do so, then you're going to start cannibalizing your internal links because the internal links will be linking to two pages about data, not one page about data. Clearly a link can only link to one page at a time. So there are things that you can do to manipulate that if you really have two pages that are about data you could for example say that this is about data in the con in the context of uh, some other um, entity here and that will allow you to slightly change the parameters of the natural language uh, learning also if there is no entity in the drop down that you think is a, is appropriate you can put in a wikipedia url but please bear in mind that if you're going to do that there has to be a reason why uh, we've uh, we've not seen the entity in the first place. Uh, and so it may be, again, that your content needs some adjusting, or it may be that uh, our natural language algorithms have not picked up a concept which we should have picked up. And there will be opportunities to report that if you, if you spot that. So now in the background, uh, our system has been uh, doing some, uh, some, some thinking. Uh, and we can see now that we've created 35 links um, that are linking from other web pages on the site back to the home page around the concepts of data and research. So on the page about, uh, uh, about um, hot hand artifact for dummies, uh, it's found the anchor text data for substreaks, which is talking around the concept of data. And I can click on that and see what's happening here. So if I go down uh, here, we've got a, um, a cache of the page that, that we've seen. And we can see in here that we've linked with the anchor text data for substreaks back to the page that we have identified as being the one page on the website that is most important for the concept of data. So this internal linking now is done very much at an entity level and a concept level. You as a human have uh, helped the, the system to identify which pages are the most important page on the website for a given topic or concept. And InLinks has found all of the other mentions or mentions of those topics and found links that are appropriate and link them through to the, uh, to the target page. And from here, you can edit these links. You can remove these links if you want to. The great thing about InLinks is that if you put one line of code in the footer or any part of your web page, uh, then all of the internal links and the schema are injected automatically. You do not need to continually go back to the developers and add and take away the links and hard code them every single time. It'll all be done through the interface here. So we've created some uh, internal linking uh, and we've also created some schema. Let me show you the schema that's been created. So the schema that's created is said, uh, <coughs> hey, Mr. Search Engine or Mrs. Search Engine, this is about a thing called data. This page is about a thing called data. And in case you don't know what that is, it's the same as this Wikipedia page over here for the concept of data. It's also at research. And here's the Wikipedia page for research. Notice that we've also added another one here. 
We've also said that this is about a thing called thinking. And uh, in case you don't know what that is, uh, search engine, then here's a Wikipedia page for cognition, which is a synonym for thinking. So we don't just rely on you setting the target topics. We can also spot other things that are important, but we won't be creating links around the concept of cognition. We'll only be creating links around the concept of data and research. We also have some mentions here. So we have also said to the search engine that this, we, we know that this page is also talking about things like anonymity and publishing and uh, wiki or, or, and audiences and, and women. Um, however, these mentions are probably secondary to the primary target um, uh, op, uh, entities in this page of data research and cognition. So what we've tried to do here is uh, turn an implicit understanding of what the page is mainly about into an explicit uh, mention of what the page is about. And importantly, that has allowed us to direct our internal linking so that we now are showing a search engine where the authority is uh, on our website for the concepts of data and research. So let's just go down and have a look at what happened on the seminar page. We created a lot less links to the seminar page, and that's because we're talking about seminars much less on the website. However, I go down there, we can see that we've got the Anchor Tech seminars uh, on uh, these three pages, uh, and they're linking through to the, uh, to the page that's about seminars. So that's the internal linking and the schema. There is one other thing that I should be mentioning about the schema, is that we also will create FAQ schema on the fly. If we see a page with more than one H tag in questions followed by paragraphs of text. We're going to take this as a question and answer page or a question and answer section in a page, and we'll create some FAQ schema for you as well. So this target button allows you to, in summary, uh, create schema for the page and also to build internal links. And the important thing about this is that you don't have to manually put those into the page they will be injected into the page just as soon as you put this code live onto your website. So what about the audit section? Let's go and have a look at this now. And let's audit one of the pages on the website. Let's find something that might be suitable for auditing. Okay, so this page here, dataclada.org slash 14, you can see that dataclada.org is not really that interested in search engine optimization in the, in the true sense of the term because they've just got the default settings on WordPress. But it's already ranking uh, position 24 uh, according to SEMrush, which we took on the uh, 17th of September, 2021. Uh, and it's ranking position 24 for the phrase football professional football prediction. Uh, and the text is how to win a football prediction contest. So maybe we can optimize this. Uh, so if I press the audit button, then it's come up with, with a suggested uh, phrase that you might want to rank for, but I'm going to change this to, um, to uh, how to win a, well, to a, a to football prediction contest. So you can change these around or football prediction contest uh, and put anything that you want in here. So we're going to build a knowledge graph, not of your own website, but of the pages that are already seen by Google as the best pages for the phrase football prediction contest. So it's going to bring back that content and we're going to analyze those 10 web pages and build a knowledge graph of that content. So we're going to have a lot of information about all of the topics that these best of read web pages are talking about. And then we can compare that against the topics uh, and the content that is already in the content on the uh, datacolada.org website and use that to improve the content. So we've come up with an estimated SEO score and a good SEO will tell you not to be driven by these stats. I think after around about 80%, uh, our AI algorithms are not necessarily going to help you to get better and better, but getting you up to that kind of level, uh, I think you'll be able to see just how this is working. So the way that this system works is we've got the content that you've already written, 
And now we've got all of the underlying topics that your competitors are talking about. So if you want to understand the concept of association football, we can click on that and we can see what that topic is. So association football is more known, commonly known as football or soccer. And here's the Wikipedia explanation of it. There are some synonyms for association football, which are football and soccer. And then there are a whole bunch of related topics and ideas which are optimized or, or, or centered around different verticals, uh, which you might use to expand your content if you want to. If any of these are ever wrong, you can report an error here. And this will allow our human editors to uh, retrain our systems in future and focus on the things that you care about as a customer. So in this particular example, we can see that um, the concept of sport is used by our competitors on average five times on the page. One of them is just talking about it once. One of them is talking about it 12 times. Uh, and this content on the right hand side here, which is a, a sandbox of the, the live content, is talking about it twice. So that's within the zone of one to 12 or between one and maybe 13 or 14. So we kind of think that that's great. You're doing fine. You don't have to talk about sport just more times for any, for any more benefit, really. However, what is interesting is that television shows are something that your competitors are talking about a fair amount, and this content is not talking about. So you might want to consider talking about television or television shows or teams or colleges because you're not talking about these concepts and your competitors are. Now, you can just uh, blindly take these, uh, these topics, so you can just sort out the missing topics and start to add them to your content if you wish. Or you could be a little bit more selective and say, well, actually, I'm really talking about things that are relevant to my business in the context of, say, society, because this is a, uh, this is a website that, it, that, that may be more related to society um, than other things, or sciences, because uh, this is all about experiments, maybe better. In which case, things like experience and in injury, injury, whilst very unimportant in general terms, might be more important to your web website because of the nature of the, the content on your website. So you can choose and filter these um, to get some better ideas. And if there's some that are inappropriate, you can just take them out. So maybe you don't need to talk about televisions and television shows. So we can just take that one out so that it's coming out of the analysis. So now what we can do here is, um, is start to use this to rewrite our content. And we've got two ways in which we can rewrite the content. We can either just start talking about these things here. So if I want to talk about game, I can just... Uh, and you can see that as the concept of games is in there, the concept of sport is added. It's found that the concept of sport is has been as is there. So we increase the uh, the mention of of sport here, uh, and uh, it will eventually start to um, it will start to <coughs> add entities as we go. Uh, and as those entities are added, these numbers on the left hand side will change. So you can just um, add content as you go. But you may be the SEO and you may have a content writer. So there is another way that you can add content. And that, that is by uh, just adding the ideas for somebody to do later. So you could say, television show, is this an idea that's important to me? You can use this to get the idea of a television show. And you can say, yes, I want, to, I want the content writer to add the, uh, the idea of a television show. And if they're going to do that, maybe they should talk about the Walt Disney Company and HBO and video on demand. So they can choose some related ideas to expand on the concept of a television show. And every time I'm pressing those ads or plus buttons, it's adding some ideas at the bottom of this editor here so that you can disassociate the analysis side of uh, building your content up and the content writing ideas. So you can then leave the content writer to do what they do best, which is to weave these into a good story uh, that's appropriate for the content rather than cramming them in on the fly. There's also another idea about adding uh, the content if you didn't have any content at all. I'll come on to that in a, in a minute. So you can use this to inform your content, to improve your score, to uh, increase what, what um, your relevancy within any vertical. You can also 
have a sneak peek on your competitors. So these are the top 10 websites that are coming back for uh, the phrase that we were trying to optimize for. Uh, and these are the ones that provided the underlying data for the knowledge graph that we just saw. And what we can do here is a few other things. Firstly, if any of these are inappropriate, or if we are unable to read them, you can swap them out if you want. So you can uh, change this for another URL. And that might happen, for example, if a YouTube um, page comes back, which might be appropriate to the user, but it's not the kind of content that you're going to be able to optimize around. So you may choose to swap that out and put in whatever came in at position 11 on Google, for example, as, as a, an alternative. Uh, you could put a page that isn't actually live on the internet, but you know it's important content. Uh, you can even cut and paste your own uh, code here and put it straight onto the website. And then we will read that instead of uh, the content that we see on a website. And that's particularly useful if the page is, for example, behind um, a walled garden. So uh, you can then use this as well to um, have a quick look at their headlines and see if there's some ideas that are important. So within here, if I click on this, this, this one here, we've got uh, that they've been talking about um, something like choice. And maybe we need to talk about choice in our articles so we can add the concept of choice. And that will add that to the ideas section at the bottom of the page as well. So you can take some ideas from them and make sure you've covered the important ideas um, so that your content writer will be able to remember those. If you want to, you can use this to find synonyms. These are you know, 29 words that are related to the concept of uh, prediction. Um, or you can dive into our question finder tool and this will give you 101 questions around the concept of games or here's 55 around video games or here's a whole load around uh, sport. And again, you can press the add buttons to add these to uh, your content ideas as well. And then, uh, in the, in the, and then in the next section, the content structure section, we come up with a formula for if you hadn't written any content at all, a way in which you could write the topics that are ranking, uh, the topics in, in the pages that are ranking already for the, uh, the phrase that we're trying to optimize for. Uh, and so you can build your own uh, content plan for somebody. Now, what we've actually done already is put the whole of this onto this page. So underneath the content that's live, if there was no content, it would just say start typing here. Under the content, we have put a brief overview of, uh, of how many pages are on there and some, some scores, then the competitor's information. Sometimes we have some questions in here. And then we've got this section of possible content structure. And you see in part one, it says game, athletic, content, football. Uh, part one, game, athletic, contest, sort of contest, football. So what we're doing here is we've cut and pasted all this. So you could just, uh, just ask the uh, content writer to start writing about all of these ideas and connect these dots into sensible stories. Or alternatively, you could delete all this and you could create your own and say, you know what? I don't really want to talk about claims. I do want to talk about games. and I do want to talk about ratings. and I do want to talk about um, reviews. And I do want to talk about these ideas. And so you can add and create your own uh, set of ideas as to what you think is important to add. And all of these ads will be added down to the content ideas at the bottom here. So you can build your own um, content plan if you want around the, uh, the topic. There are a few things uh, that we also do here uh, over, and, over and beyond this. Um, we, uh, there are a few other things that we do here um, that will allow you to um, do other things here. If you press this, uh, this, this slide out button, it'll make this a much wider um, analysis page and you can expand this there's a, there's some interesting things that are, are happening up here it'll tell you your main missing topics and whether your word word count is is in the same sort of region as your as your competitors uh, but from here you can also see a very interesting topic chart so this topic chart now is similar to the one that we saw earlier for your own website but now it's analyzing uh, and building a knowledge graph of your competitors content so within the context of um, society um, the competitors are talking about team sports, results, information, television teams, champion, etc. cetera. Um, and you are talking about game and sport and results and information and schools, but you're not talking about television teams and champions. So you can use this to try and work out what are the most important things within your vertical. So you could sit there and again, and just click on television here 
and it comes up with the same chart that it did before and you can add the concept of television to your uh, to your um, content ideas uh, as well uh, and the ones in red are generally more important than the ones in yellow uh, so you get some kind of idea of a traffic light system of course when they're green they come onto the inside uh, the inside track so this will allow you to um, to visualize the uh, So this will allow you to visualize the topics that are in your competitors uh, and the knowledge graph that you're going to need to emulate and improve upon to become an authority in a given topic. Also here, there's a couple of other interesting buttons. One is that this is currently uh, analyzing the live URL, um, but as soon as you um, confirm your score in this editor, we will switch to analyzing what is in this editor. So we do not update this content live on your website. So we therefore have to tell you whether we're syncing and analyzing with the live URL or whether we're syncing and analyzing with the, uh, the editor. So now this has changed to text editor. And that's just to make you aware that we, have, we are not analyzing what's on the, the live website. Now the content writer has to finish their writing so that uh, the content can be put back on. But if you ever put it up on the, on, the, on the website and you want to change it back to the live URL, you can click the update here and reanalyze the live URL and that will take it back to the live, um, the live analysis. We also have a public URL here, which is a read-only version of this report. That's very useful if you're an agency or whether you're in a large organization because you can show somebody over a Zoom call or over an MS Teams call a read-only version of this and explain why you want to try and update the content. So in this particular case, you can say to the, to the customer or to the, uh, the C-suite uh, that you want to rewrite this because your competitors are all talking about seasons and also all talking about college and you're talking about these ideas. And these are ideas that we think uh, that Google has, uh, uh, has seen as important topics on the pages that are ranking for the phrase that we're trying to optimize for. We also have uh, we also have a very nice uh, ability and workflow for you to be able to assign this to people as well. So if I click back on the project button here and go down to the the page that uh, that we've audited. Oh, by the way, you could have just filtered over on the left hand side and just seen those page, that page as well. You can see here that an assign button has appeared. And so you can then set up content writers and the content writers have full access to that edit suite, uh, to that analysis suite, but they don't get to see all of the other pages on the website. So you can then give them some instructions and allow them to do the content writing. Uh, and when they've uh, done it, they can let you know. It also shows you, I'll put this back to all of them. It also shows you here that this is currently being edited uh, and therefore this 38 percent is not really appropriate um, for the live website because it may be the content that's being worked on at the time as soon as that's reanalyzed against a live url the editor button will disappear so i think that's about it for the tool there are a number of other things that we do do we show you growth opportunities we've got uh, market trend or trend data around entities uh, we have many other things coming along in the pipeline uh, but hopefully you've got the idea of the three main things that inlinks does that other tools don't do in the same way that is to create schema about the content around each individual page to build internal links and inject those internal links into the body text of a website and to help you rewrite your content for content writers based around the entities and ideas and topics that are already important in the pages that are ranking for any particular given phrase. It's a very cool tool. You can start it for free. You can start paid versions for under $40 a month. And I hope that you will enjoy using endings. Thank you for your time.